This is a blank Nuxt project created using the Nuxt CLI. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate directors with this Nuxt 3 project. Now, over here in the terminal, the only thing we need to do is install the directors SDK like so. Before we continue, let's spin up the development server using npm run dev. And we can just leave this running throughout the length of this tutorial. Create a new directory called plugins and inside of that a file called directus.js. Import our required functions from the directus SDK and then initialize an instance of the directus SDK, making sure to provide your full directus project URL and including the rest composable. Then define a new Nuxt plugin, providing our directus instance, our read item and read items functions to our entire Nuxt application. In my existing directus project, I've created a collection called global. This collection has a title and a description. In this directus project, the public role has been given read access over all of the user created collections and additionally the directus files core collection. Replace Nuxt welcome with Nuxt page to use file based routing, then create a new directory called pages and inside of that, a new file called index.view. Inside of index.view, create an empty template, which we'll populate in a moment, and create a script setup. We can now import this directus and read items uh, function from the plugin. That's why they have the dollar sign in front of them from use Nuxt app. And then we're going to use async data. We are going to return directus dollar sign dot request and inside of this we are going to run read items once again with the dollar sign global and that is because it is the name of the collection so we will be reading the global collection out of this we will destructure the response from this the returned value from this and we will get the access of data we will get the property of data available so if i just put data in here and i go back to the browser we will see data coming back from directors, which is great. Let's clean this up just a little bit. We are going to firstly provide the name of this because I don't like data. I think that's not very descriptive. We will rename this into global and we will put in here h1 global.title and a paragraph tag global.description. Going back to our browser, we now see that we have a page with our header and our description directly from directors. Inside of our directors project, we also have a pages collection. Every page has a slug. This is the unique ID for this collection, the primary key. Uh, it is a manually entered string, um, and this correlates with the URL that we're going to load this data at. So this will be at slash about. They have a title and they have content. This is a what you see is what you get editor, which means under the hood, it's actually just storing HTML. Inside of your pages directory, create a new file called slug.view, where slug is surrounded by square brackets because it is a dynamic route. This is very similar to when we used our global data with some notable differences. Firstly, instead of using read items, we are using the singular read item function. Because we only need the specific item for any given page uh, that matches this dynamic value. How do we get that value? Firstly, we are going to utilize the use route composable provided by Nuxt. Then inside of the directus.request, when we run read item, the first argument is the collection and the second one is the specific id of the item we're grabbing we can now because we have uh, created a use route instance here we can use route.params.slug 
If we head to slash about, we see that data is loaded in correctly. We see it's mostly an, a string of HTML, but we also have the slug and the title. Let's improve the way this looks. Firstly, we're going to once again have an H1 with page.title. We're also going to use a div with vhtml as an attribute and that value will be page.content. This will render out that HTML directly. Just a note for, from a security standpoint, you have to know that this content is safe in order to use vhtml. If only you are the author or all the authors are trusted, uh, then this is a fine approach. We now see this page is being properly rendered with all of the correct HTML tags. The last thing we want to do is ensure that if a page does not exist in Directus, that we successfully throw a 404 not found error. So we can add this code in the bottom to achieve that. Our Directus project also includes a posts and authors collection. Inside of a post, just like before, we have a slug, a title and a content field, but there are some extras. Firstly, an image, which actually is a relational field to the director's files core collection. We'll see how this works in a minute. A publish date and a relational field to an author. Our authors just have a name for now because I want to show you how relational data works. Inside of our pages directory, let's create a subdirectory called blog. And inside of that, a file called index.view. This is the file which will be loaded when someone goes to slash blog. In order to load a list of blog posts, we're going to use read items. Inside of read items, we're going to query that posts collection, but this time we're using some of Directus's inbuilt query uh, properties. Firstly, we're using fields to specify the specific fields we wish this request to return. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want to return the entire blog post itself because that is a large amount of data that we're not actually going to use on this page. Secondly, we want to access a kind of property of that relational author value. So here we're getting the slug, the title, the publish date, and the author's name. Remember that this is held inside of that author's collection, not inside of the posts collection. We're also using a sort to make sure that the newest post comes first, as is typical on most blog posts. To actually render the list, we're going to fall back on our view fundamentals. We're going to create a loop. And for every item in the loop, we're going to render a list item, which contains a link that goes to slash blog slash and then the dynamic slug will render the title, the publish date and the post dot author dot name. So that's a nested value there. And in our browser, we now see a list of blog posts latest first. Now, if we click on one of these links, we actually get a 404 and that's because we haven't yet built the blog single page. But take note that this was sending us to slash blog slash and then the slug for this individual post. Back in our editor inside of this blog directory, create a file called slug.view where slug is a dynamic route. At this point, hopefully you should start to see some patterns inside of an individual blog post. Um, we are using read item and the route param slug once again, except this time we are also using the fields query uh, parameter. So here we have uh, an, a wildcard that says, give me, give me every field related to this blog post, but I also want to grab some relational data. I once again want the author's name and out of the image, I want the ID and the description of that image. And if nothing comes back, if this post does not exist, once again, throw a 404. I'll move this down so it's a little more readable in, in all. Once again, we're just putting in the post title and the post content using vhtml with once again a note that you have to be able to trust this content in order to use vhtml and not otherwise sanitize content. And then we have an image tag. This is where we're using directors files. So 
in here, this is a long string, which uh, which does the following. Firstly, grabs the URL from our initialized directus SDK in the plugin. So this value here is equal to this value here. The SDK automatically adds a forward slash if there isn't one present. So this is equal to our project URL slash assets slash ID of the image. And instead of returning a huge image, we're just returning one with a width of 600 pixels. So it will resize that image on the fly for us. And then it will utilize the description as the alt text for this image. If we head over now to our individual blog post, which we got to from the listing, we have the image. Following the image, we have the H1. And then we have just all of the HTML from the content. What you see is what you get editor inside of Directus. And that is a summary of how to integrate Directus and Nuxt. You have created a Directus plugin and used it to query data. You have used a singleton collection for global metadata, dynamically created pages, as well as a blog listing and post pages. If you want to change what is user accessible, consider setting up more restrictive roles and only accessing valid data at build time. If you want to build more complex dynamic pages out of reusable components, we have a guide in our docs for doing this. I hope you found this video interesting and have fun with Directus.